Learning to prompt using your voice is an absolute game changer if you're working with ChatGPT. I've been lucky enough to go along to a couple of conferences about ChatGPT and AI and also to attend a workshop where we looked at using your voice to send your prompts to ChatGPT. It's super simple to do, but it means that really quickly you can efficiently get a lot more out of ChatGPT. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you some examples right at the beginning across a range of different things that I do with ChatGPT, including learning music, studying languages, etc. This will change the way you work with ChatGPT. After that, I'm gonna show you the plugin that I use. And then finally, I'm gonna tell you what I learned about prompting from the conference that I went to. I really hope you like this video and as always if you do please like it, please share it, please comment on it and of course join me on my YouTube channel. I will create a menu system so that you can jump to any part of this video. Just one thing, people always ask me how I make my videos. I use Camtasia. In the description below, you'll find the link to download it for free and test it. You'll also get a great discount on the educational version in the link below, plus an additional 10% if you use the code. You'll also get 10% off the commercial version if you use that same code. And finally, there's a complete course that takes you through everything that I do to make my videos, and that's also in the link below. Can you tell me all the chords that make up the major G scale? And can you also tell me the notes that are in all of those chords? Certainly. In the key of G major, the chords that are typically used are built on the notes of the G major scale. I want to create an exercise for my students where student A has one story and student B has another story and I want the students to find the differences in the stories. So could you write two stories for me about a boy called Alex who decided to move to Spain to learn the language and he financed his life through teaching English. However, in story one, he decides to actually stay and spend the rest of his life in Spain. Whereas in story two, after 10 years, Alex decides to leave. Can you write the two stories for me so that I can then give one story to student A and one story to student B? Story one, Alex's new home in Spain. Alex, a young and adventurous boy, made a life-changing decision to move to Spain to immerse himself in the Spanish. Those two stories are great. Can you choose 10 words in the two stories that would be useful to show to my students to prepare them to read the story so we can help them with some basic vocabulary before they begin to read either story A or story B? Certainly. Exclamation mark. Here are 10 words from the two stories that would be useful for your students to familiarize themselves with before reading. Immersed. Fully involved or absorbed in something. Okay, I really hope that gave you a bit of an idea of why it's so useful to use your voice, but also the way that I'm really giving ChatGPT a lot of information to make sure it clearly understands what I want it to do, so I'm setting the context, etc. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually download the very simple plugin that I use. It just takes a few seconds and it's very easy to operate as well. One thing, I have got an advanced training video on using ChatGPT for teachers. And if you want to watch that, I'm going to put it on the screen now and you can click on the link and watch it. But what I'm now going to show you is the plugin that I'm using to communicate with ChatGPT. To actually talk with ChatGPT, all I need to do is to click on this button here and then start talking. So if I wanted to ask it a really simple question or a much more complicated question, I would just click on this button, start speaking, and then I press this space bar 
and then ChatGPT will reply to me. So just to give you a really simple example, I'm just gonna click on it now. Can you give me some information about the city of London? How rich is it compared to other cities in the world? London is one of the most economically prosperous cities in the world. So you can see here, voice control for ChatGPT, that is the plugin that I've added into my Google Chrome. Now it's super, super simple to do. I'm just gonna show you where you would find that if you click up here and go down to your settings and in your settings, you wanna come down to what's called extensions and it will be in your extensions. There it is, click there and that's gonna give you it. Now you can just click on this button to remove it. It's very quick to remove because it's so small. I'm gonna quickly show you where you can actually get that um, uh, plug in and also you'll see that you just literally click on one button and it will download for you. So you want to write in voice control for Chatbeat GPT and I would put for Google Chrome unless of course you're going to look for another plugin for another browser. I guess they've all got them. Okay, and here it is voice control for Chatbeat. Yeah, and I can just click here and that should allow me and I can. In my case, I'm gonna remove it because I've already got it downloaded, but in your case, you would click on that button there, and that would be it. You would be able then, or you would find that you've now got voice control on ChatGPT. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple of things about the voice control that are really interesting. Now, you can actually use ChatGPT in other languages, which is great for language practice. So I use it for Spanish and I've done a little bit of work in French in it. And also just to remind you that I've put out a great video, a multiple languages video about AI tools, other tools that we can use in language teaching. And if you're interested in that, then uh, click on the link that's on the screen now and that take you to a video about using AI in language teaching. We're gonna now look at how you can prompt with ChatGPT in other languages. Languages. Now, interestingly, we can also use ChatGPT and talk to it in other languages. So I'm going to switch over now to Spanish and I'm just going to ask it a simple question in Spanish. Estoy pensando visitar a Sevilla porque me han dicho que es una ciudad muy bonita. ¿Me puedes decir un poquito sobre Sevilla? ¿Qué deberías visitar cuando esté allí? Y un poquito sobre la historia de la ciudad también. Claro, Sevilla es una ciudad maravillosa para visitar en España, llena de historia, arquitectura impresionante y... In a recent conference that I was at, there was actually some training on prompting. And you probably, if you listen to me in the prompts that I was doing today, first of all, set a context. So for example, you might say something like, I'm teaching a group of students and I wanna teach them how to use the past simple. And then state an intention. So you might say something like, what I want to do is get two groups of students to read two different stories, Group A will read story A, group story will read story B. I then want them to compare their two stories and find the differences. So I really state exactly what I'm planning, intending to do. And then I am can be clear about the formatting and the content of the story. So say things like, for example, um, yeah, can you write me two stories with five differences? I want the stories to be about a boy called Alex who lives in Spain, blah, blah, blah. Can you make the level of the content appropriate for a student of B2 level? Okay, that is really helps to get things right. Now, the other thing is that you can format. So you might say, can you put the information into a table with the words on the left-hand side and the definitions on the right-hand side? So you can do that sort of thing as well. So you can actually even tell how you want the information formatted. Now, the other thing is be prepared to do things in stages. So sometimes rather than ask for all the information at the beginning, then stage it. So first of all, I asked for the story. And then afterwards I said, can you now from those two stories provide me with 10 of the most useful words that will help my students to understand when they go to read those stories? 
stories. And so I stage it, the activity and then afterwards I might ask for comprehension questions or a gap fill activity, etc. These, This, along with the voice, is really, really helping me. Okay, I really hope you liked that video. And if you did, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. You'll see loads more videos, loads of content there along the top of the menu. But you can also scroll down and see some of the latest videos, etc. You'll also find out about my courses on the front page. And if you sign up to the newsletter, there's a special offer. You'll get a 14 part video course in using technology in teaching and learning. There are no tricks. I send you a video every three or four days. And most of the tools that I recommend are completely free. Uh, as well as that, of course, you'll be updated with all the latest videos and blog posts and webinars that we often organize, etc. Also, if you want to contact me from my website, perhaps you want me to do some training in a particular technology with you or with your organization, you can contact me from the website. And I'm going to leave on the screen now some videos about AI and ChatGPT that you might find interesting. Thank you very much.